in February of 2012, RNK Distributing um, created a new product and made it available um, called Apple Stitch. And this new product is a very exciting new um, product, and especially for somebody like me who really loves to do applique and tackle twill, um, this this was very exciting to me. Um, mainly because, you know, a lot of people when they do applique, um, one of the frustrations that they they have is that uh, if you don't own a cutter, like or if you know a cutting machine, or um, if you do designs, applique designs, and you choose to cut the material after you sew it on, it can be very frustrating and it can take a lot of time. Um, many people will actually cut, cut material before they um, put it on, into a design and uh, in order to do that you have to have some way of kind of adhering it to the garment or the material that you're going to place it onto and so that requires you to do a, quite a few different steps. And um, the unique thing about the Apple stitch is it's a specifically designed to tear away um, from around a satin stitch border. And so instead of having to cut this material at all, it, it literally, um, you do a dense satin stitch and it will actually perforate the material then it will make it so that you can easily just peel it away after you're done sewing. And so it's really exciting, really innovative, new um, exclusive uh, new product of R&K Distributing and uh, with with the um, introduction of the Apple Stitch material um, we also received an update inside of the software that has a new Apple Stitch tool and this Apple Stitch tool is located right next to your applique tool and it's this little blue icon and uh, the really neat and exciting thing about the Apple Stitch tool is that it does all the work for you, basically. Um, it, you do a lot of things similar to what you do in applique, but there's a special um, part of the design that requires you to um, do an extra step. And what this tool does is it will automatically do it for you. And so I want to go ahead and show you this Apple Stitch tool and how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Apple Stitch tool and I'm going to come into my design here and I'm just going to create a little box. Let's just say I was going to put a little box of uh, Apple Stitch on a design somewhere and this isn't a perfect one but I'm going to go ahead and right click and you'll see that it actually um, created this satin stitch border and you'll notice a, a new new little stitch and this is uh, what we call a trapping stitch and there's a very specific reason why this stitch is there um, but before I, I get into that I'm going to go ahead and show you on the properties box what what it looks like up here in the properties box you'll notice it's very similar to the applique tool you're going to be able to define the width of your satin stitch border and you're going to have a uh, stitch length which doesn't really apply to um, you know satin stitch but what this applies to is the the length of the stitch for like this trapping stitch right here or a, a placement stitch that will be done and then you have the density you'll notice that there's a density setting of 0.27 this is a very dense satin stitch and the reason for that is we need it to cut or perforate the material so we need it to be about 0.27 to 0.3 millimeters in density and if you don't do it at that, it'll be very hard to peel the material away. So we need this nice 0.27 millimeter density um, satin stitch border. And then you have um, a couple other things like angle of the stitches. Um, if you're going to go around a corner, you can you know tell it at what point you want it to activate, like a square or extending out. Um, and so you can play with those when you're working with a design and it's just how at what point it it um, goes and, and makes a change to how it corners. Um, you'll notice that you have a placement line and the placement line is the first uh, line that gets sewn on and what it is is it's an actual it's the the size of the design and then you have a tack down line which is a line that actually is the first um, time that it actually 
locks the material down to the fabric or, or the garment and um, it so it locks that apple stitch fabric down to your garment and, um, and so that's a very important stitch and then you have what we call the trapping line and this trapping line is located right here and uh, what the trapping line is is for is as we stated with the apple stitch that this tight dense border right here will actually cut the material and make it easy to peel off so if we're gonna we're gonna have the satin stitch border you know a satin stitch goes side to side so if it's gonna cut the material along this outside border it would also cut the material along the inside border and so what this trapping stitch does is it runs right along just inside of it and what it does is it locks that, that material back down to the fabric so that it will not peel off from the inside so it traps the material um, on the inside of the border and that's why we call it the trapping stitch because like I said if we didn't have that trapping line there it would literally the fabric would be able to peel out from the inside so it's very important to have this trapping line and by default it's set at 2.5 millimeters and that's 2.5 millimeters from the placement line and um, so let's go ahead and do a slow redraw so you can get a better idea for this apple stitch go to view slow redraw okay so we're gonna get going the design as you know said that there was a placement stitch um, and this is the placement stitch right here and when it gets to the end what what will happen is there'll actually be a stop that takes place in in the design and it lets you to go and you're at this point gonna lay the material down onto this little line and you want to make sure you have at least a half an inch of material left on each side of this placement line um, because you're gonna need to make sure you got enough fabric down so you can tear it away at the end and uh, a half an inch to an inch so for those of you who actually do cut the fabric you know just as into a square before doing it you gotta give yourself a half inch to an inch um, excess around the the edges so then after you do that placement stitch and you lay your fabric down it's going to come in and it's going to sew this is the first tack um, tack down line which is actually going to lock the material to the fabric and then it's going to jump in and do your trapping stitch and you want to do your trapping stitch before the border so it's just showing you that automatically the software is going to create this for you and uh, once it gets done with this um, trap trapping line it's going to jump into your border and so now it's going to come in and it's going to do your border stitch and so this is what apple stitch is it's a little bit different the way that it's different from applique is that it's going to have this trapping line and the important thing to know is that if you if you were going to after this point you were going to let's say put a little design in here um, you're going to have to trap that design too. So if it's a satin stitch or a fill stitch, you're going to have to trap it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create a um, ellipse here in the middle, and I'm going to go ahead and just right click on it, and I'm going to convert it to let's say just a fill stitch. So let's say that after you did this apple stitch you wanted to have this fill stitch in there because apple stitch has will tear away you'll want to make sure that anytime you do a satin stitch or a, a fill stitch on top of the material after you've kind of sewn it in you're gonna want to go ahead and border it again and the easiest way to do that is to come back in and you grab a run stitch and you're just gonna go around your design and you want it to be about a millimeter away you know from the from the object and you're just gonna come in here and you're gonna create this little trapping stitch and it's pretty simple to do but what this will will do is it'll make sure that the material is not going to come up and out from around this fill stitch so it's going to trap that material in 
so in the event that this fill stitch actually cut the material. So this is a little trapping line. So anytime you do anything, even if I came in and I did a, I wanted a little satin stitch in here. I know this is just kind of a, a very generic design here, but I would need to come in again and border this with a run stitch so that I make sure that it traps that material in so that it will not come apart from this satin stitch and raise up. So that's just the little tricks that you you need to do with with your Apple stitch. Um, it's really simple. I love this Apple stitch tool. You have a lot of control with it. Um, you know, having the having the ability to come into your properties box and um, you know make the the different adjustments is really handy and nice. And uh, the important thing to know is that this default density go ahead and keep it the same um, you don't really need to change it uh, if you did you could do 0.3 at the most but you want to make sure it's a nice dense satin stitch and then you want to make sure that your trapping line is on the inside of the border and you want it to come around and you typically want it between one and two millimeters away from the border so that it uh, locks that material material in so it won't tear away and again if you decide to put anything in the middle uh, regardless if it's a fill or a satin you're going to want to come back in and uh, create a run stitch to trap that material again that's so that the that's so that it does not peel away from this fill stitch. So that's the, the that's how you work with the Apple stitch. It's um, pretty simple. There are a couple little tricks and neat things that you can do. Like for example, you can come in and, and import true type text. So let's say I did the letter F here and I went in. I want to come in here and I want to do let's say uh, a black really bold letter F at size 300 hit apply hit OK I'm just for the heck of it gonna resize this a little bit make it a pretty good size uh, design you can actually right click on artwork and convert it to Apple stitch and looky there you've just created an Apple stitch letter and um, and it looks really good and you'll be able to utilize that um, so you can kind of play around whatever fonts you have loaded into your computer you'll be able to access through your true type text so um, everybody might have different fonts available so you kinda have to um, just pick your own and um, find one that you like and utilize it so it's a very simple and easy to work with. Uh, the fact that you can work with true type lettering is great. Um, it really helps to um, allow you to do like custom lettering and things like that. So make sure that you check out the Apple Stitch because um, it's a lot of fun. And one of the other things I want to point out really quick with it is that if you go into your your commands tab once you have Apple Stitch selected, you will notice that there are um, you have this fabric option down at the bottom and you'll notice all these that, that start with this AS that stands for Apple Stitch and so what what uh, RNK Distributing has done is they have actually listed all the colors and the styles of Apple Stitch material that is available in here and they're actually images of the material itself so if you come in and you choose um, let's say uh, dark blue velvet and hit apply it's actually going to put the the dark blue velvet inside, and you can notice the graininess of this. It's the fuzzy part of the velvet material. It's really neat. And let's come back in here and let's choose a different one. You have glitter, so let's go to like the um, let's see blue glitter here and hit apply, and you'll notice that the blue glitter. And just so you know, that blue glitter is is all of the glitter is amazing looking. It looks 
even much better than what you see on the screen here. It's uh, probably the most popular of all the different Apple Stitch materials. And for those of you who work with sports, um, there's some great leather. Um, this is it's really you know a faux leather or a fake leather, but uh, they have like a dark brown and they have a, a really light tan color. Um, it is amazing. It looks and feels just like leather. It's really soft and plush and um, it tears away really easily so you can imagine a football or something like that done with this leather material. Also, you do have in here an Apple Stitch back of leather and, and because the brown and tan are the only options, but if you flip over the brown leather, it actually gives you the look of a black leather. And so it's kind of like a two for one. When you buy the brown leather, it'll work as a brown leather, or flip it over and it works as like a black leather. And um, the other, the other really neat things with it are each one of these um, you kind of have a a back side too. Um, but if you use the white um, velvet, you will notice that on on it you can actually flip it over and it looks like a baseball or um, it's kind of a soft vinyl look that it has so it will look like a baseball or a volleyball or anything like that so you can get really creative with sports stuff um, it's just a really neat product and, and the fact that the Apple Stitch tool was created is just amazing it makes you know creating Apple Stitch designs super super easy and it allows you to get really creative and um, so definitely check it out and um, go and get some of the material and play around with it because it's a lot of fun. If you enjoy doing applique or tackle twill as much as I do, you will absolutely love this product and you will um, you get used to it and you can't imagine not having it. You know, it's just one of those really neat new inventions that is really exciting and uh, makes doing applique uh, a lot of fun.